breast, it's somewhat a little bit more complexing and confusing because one can take normal breast tissue from um, a healthy woman and, and put those cells in culture, and they actually grow quite well. Um, but when you take cancer cells from a cancer tissue from a woman, you put it in culture, they actually don't grow well at all. And in fact, 99.9% .9 of the cells don't survive and don't grow in the dish, which actually I think speaks to the fact that there's something else that's going on in, in a tumor and the environment and the hormones and, and the um, vitamins and the, um, all the other factors in the tumor that are not there in the normal tissue. And I think, um, so we, we can't really address um, vitamins per se, but we do know that it's much harder to grow cancer cells in a dish than it is normal cells. And I think it's because of the differences that that cancer um, environment and is producing. Now, the, the point that I think, you know, is coming across is that uh, we're bombarded public you know, all of us are bombarded by sort of simplistic notions about cancer. You know, and I go through, I go past four or five health food stores on my way to work every every morning, and I see the signs in the window: take this, you know, so because this will stimulate your immune system, and you'll never get any disease, and you'll live forever. You know, is you know the sort of simplistic nature, and and biology is much more complicated than that. As you, and you're getting getting hints of it from what what we're discussing, and so the kind of simplistic notion, you know, take this, it boosts your immune system, no problem. We know all the answers. It's just not the case. Uh, and you have to be very careful of the ads, you know, designed, uh, you, you know, to sell products. Um, uh, you should also know that the restrictions on what they can say are, are not the same as with medicines. With drugs, you've got to prove safety and efficacy. You've got a Food and Drug Administration. Since these are largely derived from foods, they're being sold as food. And, you know, you can say anything you want about a food as opposed to a drug. And so, um, you know, the truth in advertising doesn't necessarily apply. Uh, and I, that's, that's a very important thing for the public to know. However, we do know some things from an epidemiological point of view, as Dr. Weinberg uh, introduced, and we have a world's expert who's right over here with a microphone, I hope. And um, could you make a couple comments about what we know from your, your work? The issue is really getting the right dose, the right amount, because uh, all of these minerals and vitamins are absolutely essential. We have to have them, but for all of them, we can get too much as well. So the interest is really trying to find that sweet spot where we're getting the optimal amount. And uh, we can't, we, for cancer, and particularly breast cancer, we don't have enough data to say for very many of them, this is really where we should be, or most people should be taking more. Um, I think there are a couple where we have enough information to say something. Uh, uh, for example, one of the topics that's really been at the vanguard of research and now in the public uh, eye as well as the vitamin D issue, and it is really quite clear uh, from many lines of evidence looking first at osteoporosis and fractures and now various cancers that most people living in this part of the United States who work inside most of the time have vitamin D levels that are too low. And I think the evidence, even if you're only looking at fractures, is that most people should be getting some more vitamin D, and a supplement is the better way to do it. You can run around in Central Park for 20 minutes without clothes on in the middle of the day. That's another way to do it. But <laughs> I, I want you to know he did this like this that. morning. All right. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, thank you, Larry. I didn't see you out there this day, but I know you're there most of the time. <laughs> yeah. we, we run naked every morning in Central Park. So. Right. Um, anyway, the. So how much vitamin D? Uh, we're sort of, I think, incrementally pushing up, it looks like, what we need to take to get to the optimal levels. And uh, two years ago, most people in this field would have said that most people should be taking 1,000 IUs uh, of vitamin D. But now that we're checking the levels of people taking 1,000, most of them are still not up to where they should be. So one, uh, if you're at all concerned about this, one good thing is to have your physician check your blood vitamin D level, and that they can tell you whether they need, uh, whether you should be getting some more. But the reality is it looks like many people who, uh, particularly if they live in the north, have darker skin, work inside, are going to take three or 4,000 IUs of vitamin D to get up to the level it looks like we need. Another, uh, now I should add that so far the data are best for prevention of colon cancer. For breast cancer, there's some suggestion, but we really have much less data. And we'll, we'll probably never really have, I think, the ideal data of long-term randomized double-blind trials uh, where we start early enough in life, go for long enough, and also can have a group that's willing to stay on placebo for many years. That just doesn't seem to be feasible uh, given the, uh, the present context. So I think we'll have to rely mostly on epidemiologic studies to find the right uh, dose level. Folic acid is another vitamin where there's been tremendous interest in research, and it looks like 
uh, 10 years ago, most people were not getting enough. Uh, now that we've fortified the food supply, maybe uh, we remove most of the deficiency of folic acid, and it's a question whether more is better for most people. But there's enough evidence that people who consume alcohol, even one drink a day, need more. I think it's good to get the RDA, but not more of that than folic acid. So the bottom line is I take a vitamin supplement, a, a, a multiple vitamin, with extra uh, vitamin D in it, the thousand IU, uh, uh, once a day, and I'm quite sure for most people that will help reduce their fracture risk, probably reduce their risk of colon cancer, uh, and for breast cancer, maybe. We're really not quite sure, but stay tuned. I think we'll have more in the Does next year or two. Does it do for male baldness is the big question. <laughs> <laughs> right. just, just a joke, folks. You know. Thank you.